the AMD Ryzen 5 5600X and 5600 just reach what is, I think, their lowest price points ever. You can currently get the 5600X for just $105 on Amazon and the 5600 for just $107. If you've watched my channel, you'll know I'm a big proponent of the AMD Ryzen 5 5600 and 5600X, even though they operate on the now dead AM4 socket. Despite the fact that the 5600 and 5600X don't offer a good long-term upgrade path, these AM4 Ryzen 5 CPUs unique selling point right now is that they offer enough performance to where they won't create a significant bottleneck for even some higher end GPUs, and they do so at a very affordable price. Not only do the 5600 and 5600X come with low price tags themselves, but there are also a lot of affordable motherboard options available for them. They also require a low amount of cooling and power, so you don't necessarily need an aftermarket cooler to cool them, and you don't need to pair them with a motherboard that has a beefy VRM. And you can get compatible DDR4 memory for them right now for a very low cost. So for budget gamers building a whole new system, all that saved money means that you'll have more money to put towards your GPU. And in this video, I'm going to quickly go over seven of the best GPU options you can currently pair with the Ryzen 5 5600X or 5600. So whether you're looking to build a new budget gaming PC, or you already have a 5600 or 5600X in an existing system, and you're looking for a good GPU upgrade, one of the GPU options listed in this video will work for you. I'll start with the high-end options and work our way down to the budget options. I paired the 5600X with an RX 7800 XT and a $1,000 gaming PC build I put together, and I benchmarked the combination in 17 different games. The pair performed very well at 1440p resolution, averaging well over 100 frames per second at max settings in games like Baldur's Gate 3, Cyberpunk 2077, and Red Dead Redemption 2. And obviously it performed even better at 1080p resolution. The 5600X does create a small bottleneck for the 7800 XT though. I also paired my 7800 XT with a newer Ryzen 5 7600, and the 7800 XT on average performed about 12% better at 1080p resolution and about 9% better at 1440p resolution when paired with the 7600 than it was paired with the 5600X. You can see the full 17 game benchmark where I pitted the 7600 against the 5600X when paired with the 7800 XT by following the link above. However, since the 5600X will cost at minimum $100 cheaper to build with than the 7600, that 10% bottleneck isn't really all that bad from a value perspective. So the 5600X and 7800 XT are a very viable combination, but considering that there is a bottleneck, the 7800 XT is probably the highest GPU I'd recommend pairing with the 5600X. And of the 7800 XTs that are out there, I personally vouch for Gigabyte's Gaming OC Edition card, which can currently be had for $490. I've just released a review on that card, and you can find a link to it in the description below. However, XFX's Quicksilver and Speedster Quick 319 are also good options, as well as Sapphire's Pure and Azrock's Steel Legend, all of which can be had for the same price or even cheaper. The next best GPU that you might want to consider pairing with the 5600X would be AMD's RX 7700 XT. At nearly $100 cheaper than the RX 7800 XT, the 7700 XT will offer excellent performance at 1080p resolution and good enough performance at 1440p resolution to where you could use the 5600X and 7700 XT for 1440p gaming as well. Of the 7700 XTs out there that come in at a reasonable price, the XFX Speedster Swift 210, the XFX Speedster Quick 319, and the Gigabyte Gaming OC Edition cards are all worth considering as they all currently come in at under $400. However, while the 7700 XT is a strong GPU, there's an older generation GPU that can currently be had for about $50 less than the cheapest RX 7700 XT that will offer similar performance to the 7700 XT. Right now you can get XFX's Speedster Swift 319 RX 6800 for just $350 on Amazon. The RX 6800 benchmarks very well at both 1080p and 1440p resolution and performs within 5% of the RX 7700 XT in most games and outperforms it in many titles as well. The 6800 does feature the older RDNA 2 architecture, but it does come with 16 gigabytes of VRAM, which helps it pull ahead of the 7700 XT in some games right now, and that extra VRAM might make the 6800 better over the long run as games continue to get developed to utilize more VRAM. 
So I think as long as the RX 6800 is in stock, and as long as it continues to get priced at $50 less than the 7700 XT, it is probably the better option between the two. Similar to the RX 6800, the RX 6750 XT is an older generation GPU that is not only still relevant, but because of its low price tag when compared to its closest competitors, it actually is the best GPU option in its price range. I have personally paired the RX 6750 XT with a Ryzen 5 5600X and an $800 gaming PC build I put together, and I benchmarked the combination in a handful of games. This combination was able to deliver an ideal in-game experience at 1080p resolution, and it performed admirably at 1440p resolution as well. At 1080p resolution, the combination of the 5600X and 6750 XT were able to deliver 134 frames per second on average in Assassin's Creed Valhalla at the Ultra preset, 114 frames per second on average in Cyberpunk 2077 at the non-ray tracing Ultra preset, and 137 frames per second on average in Baldur's Gate 3 at the Ultra preset. At 1440p resolution, the pair delivered 99 frames per second at the Ultra preset in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, 73 frames per second at the non-ray tracing preset in Cyberpunk, and 90 frames per second at the Ultra preset in Baldur's Gate 3. As of right now, you can get the XFX Speedster Quick 319 RX 6750 XT that I used in my build for $310, but it has been available for as low as $290. That's about $40 less than the RX 6800 and just $10 to $20 more than the less powerful NVIDIA RTX 4060 and Intel Arc A770. You can check out my full review of the XFX Speedster Quick 319 RX 6750 XT by following the link above. The RX 7600 XT is typically priced in the low $300 price range, and at that price it just isn't a good value proposition as long as the RX 6750 XT is available for the same price. The 7600 XT trails the RX 6750 XT by roughly 10-15% to in gaming performance. However, you can currently get Gigabyte's Gaming OC Edition RX 7600 XT for $280, and at that price there is definitely a case to be made for choosing it to pair with the 5600 or 5600X. If it were me, I'd personally try and stretch my budget to get the 6750 XT and the extra performance it offers, but both cards are solid 1080p performers, and so if you think you can use that extra $30 elsewhere in your build, opting for a 7600 XT over the 6750 XT wouldn't be the worst route. If you want to go even cheaper than the 7600 XT, Sapphire offers their RX 6650 XT for just $210. The RX 6650 XT will deliver a very good experience at 1080p resolution and trails only slightly behind newer options like the NVIDIA RTX 4060, the Intel Arc A770, and AMD's Radeon RX 7600 in performance. And with its $210 price tag, the Sapphire RX 6650 XT costs anywhere from $40 to $80 cheaper than those three options. So you can currently combine the Ryzen 5 5600X with Sapphire's RX 6650 XT for a total of $315. That's cheap enough to where you could build a really good 1080p gaming PC with this combination for around $600 or less. Even cheaper than the 6650 XT though is ASRock's Challenger Edition RX 5700 XT. The 5700 XT is three generations old now, but it is still a very powerful GPU for 1080p gaming. In fact, the 5700 XT trails only slightly behind the 6650 XT in performance, and so you can expect a similar experience pairing it with the 5600 or 5600X as you would if you paired them with the 6650 XT. Right now, you can get ASRock's Challenger RX 5700 XT for just $190, which means you can currently pair the 5600X with the 5700 XT all for under $300. If this deal is something that interests you though, I would act quick as ASRock is the only reputable brand still selling the older 5700 XT and there's no guarantee that this card will stay in stock for much longer. All right, there you have it, seven GPU options to pair with the 5600 or 5600X. And yes, this list doesn't include any Nvidia GPU options. The reality is that in the sub $500 price range, Nvidia has priced their GPU so high the AMD's counterparts are the clear winner at each price tier. And even with NVIDIA's superior upscaling technology and ray tracing performance, AMD's GPUs outperform NVIDIA's similarly priced GPU counterparts 
and these lower price points by a significant enough margin to where they're still the better option for the majority of users. But if you were looking for NVIDIA options to pair with the 5600 or 5600X, maybe because a specific game you play runs better on an NVIDIA GPU, the RTX 4070, 4060 Ti, and 4060, or the older 3070, 3060 Ti, or 3060 would be viable alternatives. Ultimately though, any of the GPUs listed in this guide will serve as excellent options to pair with the 5600 or 5600X. I've left links to all of the graphics cards mentioned in this guide in the description below. And if you have any questions on which GPU would be the best for your needs, post those questions in the comment section. In any case though, that does it for this video. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.